Extreme sports games were always a thing until the early 2010s, when these big-time publishers were phasing out these games in favor of more games that could be monetized. Much like a dad who says he's going to get some cigarettes, this genre would disappear. But, unlike that dad, it seems to be coming back, and even more unlikely, the big-name publishers who once abandoned the genre are leading the comeback. Riders Republic is an extreme sports game where you take part in multiple different extreme sports, like biking, snowboarding, skiing, the flying squirrel suit from Super Mario, and everyone's favorite sport, Iron Man. But before you get into that, you need to create your own guy with one of the most limited character creators I've seen in quite a while. I'm not expecting cyberpunk, where you can change the size of your- Johnson! But you can't even change the height or weight of your character, there are only 18 hairstyles, only 5 face presets, and when making a brown guy, it looks like a person who was dipped in cinnamon, rather than actually looking brown. But at least you can make the Hulk, minus the steroids, I guess. After that, you're thrown into the map, and with the exception of the character models, this game looks really great. There are some moments where textures are loading in, but blasting through in 60 frames per second in 4K looks really good. Not to mention that fast travel has absolutely no loading whatsoever. Get to scoot around on a delivery bike. Keep an eye out for it. Riders Republic is one of the most accessible games I've ever played, with plenty of options for disabled players and options for casual players like auto landing when doing tricks. And even full button mapping, which I definitely took advantage of. All the sports at your disposal handle differently. Bikes have you managing a sprinting meter, while snow sports are more momentum based. Tricks with both are aerial tricks, with the big difference is that snow sports are Urban Meyer approved, because there's a ton of grinding. A big emphasis is also placed on landing your tricks perfectly, which is harder than it looks when you add flips and twists to your tricks. For point competitions, you have a risk of going for more flippy tricks for more points, but it might not be worth it because if you get a bad landing, your points would be only a fraction of what they would be if you landed perfectly. The wingsuit from Super Mario is probably my favorite. The whole thing is about using your trajectory in balance with your speed. Getting close to the ground or other obstacles gives you an increase in your score, so being a daredevil is encouraged. And if you fail, you get to look at the hilarious crashing animations, which is a win either way. Is he dead? Iron Man is serviceable. It's not bad, but nothing that's gonna blow you away. I don't love it 3000, I like it 1500. Overall, these gameplay styles are pretty fun. You're thrown into a map that's filled with collectibles and stunts. In the map, you see other players and riders just riding around and doing challenges themselves. This may not seem like much, but when you're doing an event or your own thing, you see some players flying by and it actually feels like the place is alive. The stunts being pretty interesting, like this one where you are essentially doing freaking Crash Bandicoot platforming with a damn bike. The aforementioned events pop up all over the map, and these are races or trick contests. Self-explanatory, but the thing that mystifies me is no matter how badly you perform, you get a star anyway, which are things that help you upgrade your gear. Theoretically speaking, a toddler could have the controller and would be rewarded the same amount as you, even if you come in first. Now there are these optional tasks you could do for more stars, but you shouldn't be rewarded with a completion for doing awful. What kind of game does this? One of the big gimmicks that this game has is the ability to switch your sport on the fly. Point radio. There are events that do this, and it reminds me of those Sonic racing games which are better than this game, simply because it has Wreck-It Ralph, of course. 
It works really well, and you could do this in a regular open world, although I think it would be cool to switch on the fly rather than opening up a wheel. This could be the Devil May Cry of sports games. Riders Republic has a great core foundation. But, unfortunately, Ubisoft messes it up by adding a bunch of modern bullshit that bogs down the overall experience. When you start the game, you don't get to have control and explore the map until about an hour in while the game gives you a tutorial about every little thing, like an overly safe mom who's letting their kid go to school for the first time by themselves. Nice work! Time to let loose and do your own thing. When the game isn't giving us a 7,258 page college thesis on how it works, you watch these cutscenes with really, really bad dialogue. Brett has two extra nipples. Two. Yup, it's a real thing. Right, enough nipple talk. Crack on with these new tracks. <laughs> The person who wrote this is the Hello Fellow Kids meme, but in human form. His name is Brett, and he's triple OG. Because their events are off the hook. It's vibing, right? The guy I was telling you about is a true ledge. He's the one that inspired all the cool cats to come out here in the first place. Come on, stay breezy. Yo, these cutscenes are lit. No cap. Microtransactions make their way into this game as well, because it's not like these games are sold for $60 or anything. If you want to dress up like a scarecrow to keep away any things like crows or females, you'll have to open up that wallet. This is also the reason why I think customization is so limited, by the way. What's the point of giving you the ability to make your guy look unique when you can spend real world money for that luxury? The money is always right! The trend of emoting is here too, so if you like dancing after every event, this is for you. The biggest annoyance is probably the fact that this game is always online. So what if you don't have a stable internet connection? I missed the part where that's my problem. If you're offline, you get access to this Zen mode, which is just the map, but it's completely empty with no events or anything. Yes, this only affects a super small amount of people, but the thing is, Everything eventually comes to an end one day. Except The Simpsons. You can nuke the whole planet and that shit would still get renewed for another season. The point is, the servers for the game will shut down one day. 10 or 15 years later when the servers are shut down, you would only be able to watch the game on YouTube and not actually play. Ubisoft is essentially turning future players into video game cucks and it doesn't sit well with me. I praised the game's accessibility earlier, but those with shit internet can't even access it. Now that is irony. So the actual online modes themselves are fun. Racing against others is cool, and there are these team battles where you can tag specific areas with high scoring tricks. The most interesting thing is mass races. Whenever you're just hanging around on the map, a mass race would eventually be called. Mass race is live. We get to move on to compete in the craziest event in the Republic. It's cool and a little amusing when you see everyone on the map congregate to the mass race spot. It's like a bunch of seagulls flying to that one piece of bread. Once the race starts, it's a damn extreme sports orgy. I have to blur out the footage because it's not safe for work. This is a 64 person race that has three rounds and is chaotically fun pushing and bumping into people. It's madness. It's even more satisfying when you separate from the pack. The only complaint I would have is that people who have better gear have a distinct advantage over others. So if you want to realistically win in a mass race, you'd have to grind to get decent stuff first. I'm sure Ubisoft will add more features and fix things with updates, but overall that isn't really going to change anything because the problems that this game has is that it's fundamentally flawed. It's the tale of two sides. Riders Republic is a game that has the spirit of an all-time classic video game. The gameplay, while not being perfect, has the one thing a lot of video games are missing. Fun factor. It's fun to pedal your bike and maneuver past obstacles. It's fun to perfectly land on a rail, then flip off of the rail and get a perfect landing. It's fun gliding in the air as close to the ground as humanly possible. It's fun blasting through the air at fast speeds. 
it's fun to switch between playstyles on the fly and go from on the ground to the sky and vice versa. There's fun here, but the game is severely hurt by modern trends that don't make the game any better in any sort of way. Yes, the map is big and it's fun to travel through, but the problem is the map is filled with all these little side activities that come across more as busy work or chores rather than actually being fun. You know, this game reminds me of that Avengers game that came out. Uh, wrong one. Both games have a good gameplay setup, but are limited by decisions that were made by suits that make the game resemble a mobile game as opposed to actually having good content. I guess you can make the argument that what I just described is every Ubisoft game that has been released in the last 10 years. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll never tell you to leave a like on the video, but I do have a goal. And that goal is to get a McDonald's menu meal named after me. And if you leave a like on the video, I get one step closer to that goal.